Brethren, this is Big Judah, coming to you guys from California. Before I begin, and of all praise, it's the Most High, Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the earthly mother. Who is wisdom? Who is the Holy Spirit? Acknowledgement to Yahweh Shai. Prayer to the Most High blesses this lesson this afternoon. Gives us more knowledge and understanding of the events of the past. In order to understand the events that are currently happening on the earth. So we may get a much better understanding of the things that are soon to come on the earth. Over these last few videos, it should be very apparent and very clear that history is repeating itself. We're going to be getting into a firsthand account of what the Spaniards saw when they got here and their feelings about the devastation that they had brought to the natives that were here. You must understand that when we talked about the um, statue of Daniel and how it was the, was the Romans that destroyed the legs, and then it was the Romans that also mixed in with the clay and destroyed the clay as well. The Romans were the ones that uh, destroyed the southern kingdom, and they also were the ones that destroyed the northern kingdom. So who best to talk about the destruction of uh, the northern and the southern kingdom than a Roman. We're going to get into a first-hand account, which shows you why it's so important for us to work together to be able to get these books. Because um, we've been getting third-hand accounts, opinions, you know, and they've been giving us this information based on like the fact that if, uh, if someone says something about an event that happened hundreds of years ago, but just because they have a PhD behind their name, then they are totally correct. But they rarely ever go into the first hands accounts of, uh, of these subjects. Well, we're going to get into that actually today. That's the cover of the book. And this is the inside of it. We're reading from the true history of the conquest of Mexico by Captain Bernal Diaz del Castillo one of the conquerors, written in the year 1568, translated uh, from the original Spanish by Maurice Keating. <clears throat> I think there was one original that was in 1800, and then this one is from 1803. I'm almost positive. That's the one we have. Let's check and see. Yes, this one is uh, printed in London, reprinted in, at Salem by Joshua Cushing for Cushing and Appleton, 1803. Thank you for all who have been donating for us to be able to get these kinds of books. These books, like I said, are very expensive, but you're going to see why. Because we're going to get a firsthand account of one of the conquerors that was walking with Cortez who was destroying our people once they got here and the things that they saw. It doesn't get any better than this. It doesn't get any, any more authentic than this. Actually hearing from the conquerors that were there. And it's going to, um, as we get into this book, it's just going to um, show you, pretty much authenticate all the things that you're seeing right now. People are still wondering why this uh, coronavirus has been unleashed. Doesn't matter if, you know, many people try to play it off and act like it's fake. I've been hearing that from quite a few people, um, actually, in my everyday walk. But some others are getting very, very scared and starting to run to the stores and starting to see that the water's gone, toiletries are gone. Medicine's gone because, you know, they're a little late to the party. We've been trying to tell them what's going on. But see, the vast, the vast majority of the world doesn't understand why the Most High would unleash a plague on the whole world. Why would he destroy so many people? Because when they, you know, when the, when the Europeans got here, no one was here. It was just an, un, you know, an, an untamed land that anyone can come over and just 
put their flag in and it's theirs. See, that's, that's the fairy tale that's been told to the whole world. Even though the majority of people knew that there were people here that were destroyed, the Most High's chosen people were here and they were destroyed and massacred, but they've all come together to pretty much propagate a lie. Now the Most High is fulfilling his promises to his people. Even though, um, you know, we've gone through 500 plus years of destruction, degradation, murder, rape, destruction of families, you know, and it's just continued all the way till today. But now you're starting to see the Most High move. And now you're going to get a firsthand account, primary source of what he saw when they were destroying our people. And they we're also going to match it up with scripture. Since we're reading from like a older text, the words are, you know, kind of written different. So you have to kind of bear with me as I read it. Okay. Let's see here. This is from that book, The Conquest of Mexico, page 125. What I am going to mention is truth. And I swear and say amen to it. I have read of the destruction of Jerusalem. Now, this guy's already read about the destruction of the Southern Kingdom. He's a Spaniard. He's a Roman. He has, I'm sure he's been, um, had his eyes open or had the ability to read these accounts, these firsthand accounts of what was done to our brethren, what it was done to our people in the Southern Kingdom. So I'm sure he's seen plenty of this information and even read about it, about what happened to the Southern Kingdom. Now it says, but I cannot conceive that the mortality there exceeded this of Mexico. He, uh, so the death and destruction, he can't even conceive what it would exceed what he saw here in Tenochtitlan with the Hebrews, with the Northern Kingdom here. Now check this part out. For all the people from the distant provinces which belonged to this empire had concentrated themselves here where they mostly died. The streets, the squares, the houses, and the courts of the Tataluco were covered with dead bodies. We could not step without treading on them. The lake and the canals were filled with them, and the stench was intolerable. For this reason, our troops immediately after the capture of the royal family retired to their quarters. Cortez himself uh, was for some time ill from the effect of it. Okay. Let's see here. The vessels were now uh, the best situation. Uh, those on board carrying away all the plunder, for they had uh, access to houses in the water, which were not in our reach. They also found uh, what the Mexicans had concealed in their reeds and on the boards of the lake and intercepted that which was carried out of our... Let me go there on the book. I wasn't going to read this part, but I'll just read it anyways. We on land gain nothing but honor and wounds. The wealth our Navy got was much more than we could uh, guess at. Guatemizen and all his chiefs declaring when inquiry was made. Okay. So, main point on this. is that he had already seen what had happened to the Southern Kingdom. And he was showing you how absolutely horrible it was what they had did here to the um, Northern Kingdom. He'd already seen what happened to the Southern Kingdom, okay? Next point. Uh, page 126. To return to the state of Mexico. Now we know when they to say Mexico, we're just talking about the Northern Kingdom. Guatemetzin now requested of Cortez uh, that 
permission should be given to clear the city entirely of the inhabitants in order to purify it and restore its fallibility. Accordingly, they were ordered to remove to the neighbors, neighboring towns, and for th uh, three days and three nights, all the causeways were full from one end to the other of men, women, and children. So these are just bodies everywhere, okay? So weak and sickly, I'm gonna say squalid and dirty, and pestilential, that it was a uh, misery to behold them. When all those who were able uh, had uh, qu quieted the city or quitted the city, we went to examine the state of it, which was, as I have described, the streets, courts, and houses were covered with dead bodies. And some uh, miserable wretches were creeping about in the different uh, stages of the most offensive disorders. The consequences of famine and improper food. The ground was all broken up to get at the roots of such ve uh, vegetation as it afforded. And the very trees were stripped of their bark. There was no fresh water in the town. During all uh, their distress, however, um, though their constant practice was to, let's say, no, no, ceased, feast on uh, such as they took prisoners. No instance occurred of their having preyed on each other and certainly never existed uh, since the creation of a people which suffered so much uh, from hunger, thirst, and warfare. So that was the main point right there at the end. When it says, uh, hey, uh, ever since, let me see, having prayed, uh, let's see here, no instance occurred of their having prayed um, on each other and certainly never existed since the creation, a people which suffered so much from, hu from hunger, thirst, and warfare. Now see, this is showing you the curse that was put on our people. And it shows you how the Northern Kingdom went through that curse as well. See, I keep hearing people talking about how, you know, I got people coming on, on the comment board and they were talking about, um, you know, you, you can pretty much answer everything out of the Bible, which you can't. Because then I would ask, well, then show me how uh, the Northern Kingdom in the Bible uh, went ahead and fulfilled Deuteronomy 28. Show me in the Bible where that happened. See, they're not going to be able to, but they're still going to try to keep everyone from reading any other book. This shows you right here. This is a firsthand account. This is one of the conquistadors. He said he's never seen anything like this. He's telling you, since the creation of a people, of people, which suffered, uh, you know, a creation of people suffered, you know, no, so much from hunger, thirst, and warf warfare. There's never been a people that has suffered like the ones that suffered here. The amount of bodies, the death, the destruction, and how the fact that the vast majority of the world knows that this happened and has turned a blind eye to it. Again, this is not a third-hand account. This is not someone that lived hundreds of years later and then tries to change it up and tell you that it wasn't so bad. So there's other books I'm going to be bringing out also a little bit later. Sister sent it to me, and I have a, I'm just trying to wait for it to uh, show up on my computer. It's called, uh, let me get it real fast. The Conquest of Paradise. You're going to see how what they did was they tried to just change up everything. They tried to change up how bad everything was. They tried to take away their, um, you know, their culpability and the destruction of our people and try to make it sound like it was just a plague that did it and it wasn't them. But that's okay, because that's, that's what they've done this entire time. But see, they've done it for so long that people have forgotten about all the things that our people have suffered through at the hands 
of the Spaniards and the Europeans. But what the world doesn't understand is the Most High never forgot. He has been receiving reports the whole time from the angels, and they've been depositing them, you know, up there with the Most High. And they know that at the end, the Most High is going to call for an account. And that's what you're seeing the beginning is of right now. And the vast majority of the world either right now is in, you know, they're either in, they're, <laughs> they're either in denial and want to act like everything is fake, or they want to, you know, they're, they're really into it really deep and they're trying to figure things out and they're trying to prep and everything else. And then they throw their little Jesus piece at the end because they know that there's something's afoot. But this is what's afoot. This is what's coming on. This is what was given. This was uh, prophesied to happen to our people. We heard about what happened in 70 AD. But these people who are stuck in the Bible, they can't tell you what happened to the Northern Kingdom. Or right here in this book, it told you right now, it gave you an example of the things that this guy saw from a firsthand account. And it also gave you a lot of information about how no one, he, he knew about the, he knew what happened to the Hebrews, the Southern Kingdom. And he's saying that nothing was as bad as this. Okay. So what I want to read is this right here. This shows you, you know, this shows you right now about that. It shows you about that prophecy that was going to happen to our people right here. Daniel 9, 11 and 12. All Israel has transgressed your law, not just the Southern Kingdom, the Northern Kingdom as well. So we just don't want to hear about this, the southern kingdom, what happened to them. We want to hear what happened to all of Israel, because all of Israel has transgressed your law and turned aside, refusing to obey your voice and the curse and oath that are written in the law of Moses, the servant of the Most High, have been poured out upon us. So there's Deuteronomy 28. Here's all the curses. And now they've been poured out on all 12 tribes. If you're still stuck in the Bible, you ask someone who keeps telling you don't read anything else, tell them to show you what happened to the Northern Kingdom, how they also went through the curses. And they're not going to be able to. It says, he has confirmed his words, which he spoke against us and against our rulers, he, uh, who ruled us by bringing upon us a great calamity. For under the whole heaven, there has not been done anything like what was done against Jerusalem. And Jerusalem can go with all 12 tribes. Doesn't just mean that one little spot of land over in the Middle East. Again, for under the whole heaven, there has not been done anything like what has been done against Jerusalem. So you want to find out who the Hebrews are, you find out the ones that have been treated the worst, the ones that have gone through the most, the ones who were destroyed and they've been trying to hide the fact of all of their dealings and all of their treachery against our people this entire time. That's who we're talking about. That's who the Most High is coming to redeem. And all the ones who have been hiding, not telling the truth, complicit with the lie, the Most High was not going to cover you. But this is, like I said, if this isn't right, if this is wrong, prove it. So I tell people all the time, they come and they talk and they say things but I say, hey, prove it. But they never do. They just continue saying the same things, but they never prove it. This, like I said, what I showed you was a firsthand account. Okay? Of a conquistador that was there. He's telling you what he saw. This is Captain Bernal Diaz del Castillo, a conquistador. So if you can find something better that says something totally different, please be my guest. If not, then you need to start uh, really doing some serious research. Again, I want to say thank you to the nation who has uh, helped me to be able to get these books so I can bring this information to you. Thank you to the uh, Holy Spirit to be able to guide me to be able to bring this information forth to the nation as well. And thank the Most High for his protection as we do, these, uh, as we do this work. There's more coming, brethren. But then again, this is just another nail in the coffin and just showing you why the Most High is bringing judgment on the world. The whole world has ignored our plight. The Most High ignored you know, our destruction for a long time, just like he said he would. 
but he also said at the end he was going to restore us. He's restoring us in mind and he's restoring us in spirit right now. And it's a beautiful thing to see. All praise is to the Most High, Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the earthly mother, who is wisdom, who is the Holy Spirit. Acknowledgement to Yahweh Shai. Shalom.